Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley and big news from CA. The Total War Saga game has been announced. It's going to be Thrones of Britannia. So this is going to be really cool. Um, CA finally giving us the announcement and we pretty, had, pretty well had good indications that it was going to be something to do with the Vikings of the Viking Age. So here they announced that it's going to be taking place in 878 AD. So we'll go over kind of the history, the time period, what could potentially be covered. CA also has a blog post that goes a little bit into the details of you know, teasing at some mechanics. But before we get into all of that, let's go ahead and watch the trailer because of course we have to. It is freaking glorious. So let's go ahead and put this on full screen and get started. I think you're really gonna enjoy this one. Ragnar Lothbrook lies dead in the Northumbrian dirt. Veins choked with Anglo-Saxon wrath and Viper's venom. Revenge was swift. His sons laid waste to the British Isles, splintering the land and slaughtering all who opposed them. The Viking hordes swept west. An insatiable force that brought Alfred the Great to his knees. But some men can only be pushed so far. The year is now 878 AD. Whilst Norsemen settle land they once pillaged, Alfred of Wessex seeks to unite the Isles under one banner. But here stand a new wave of the ambitious and hungry, ready to stake their claim to Britannia. Kings will rise. One will rule. Damn, son. So that was freaking dope. Uh, that is awesome. Really love uh, the way CA is pushing uh, the artwork and the trailers. I mean, this is I mean, pretty much straight out of what they were honing in on in Warhammer 2. Animated art like this, I much prefer it. Um, over uh, in-game cutscenes. I know the in-game cutscenes kind of let us see some of the units and the settings, but goddamn, does this really tell the tale and set the theme uh, dead on. So yeah, this is freaking awesome, and I hope it does allude to what we'll be seeing in the campaign in terms of narrative events, uh, pushing the storyline forward. What they did with Warhammer 2 was freaking awesome, with just the different, uh, all the different uh, storytelling narratives pushed along by slightly animated artwork, events on the campaign, stuff like that. Um, freaking awesome. So in terms of the trailer, I mean, it kind of gives you a rough outline of the history, um, but it's pretty vague. So um, before we dive into kind of what's going to be in the game here, we'll go over a little bit of the history just because I think some context is good. Let's go ahead and give CA's take on it, and then we'll give you a little bit more of a deeper dive. So the year is 878, the embattled English king Alfred the Great has mounted a heroic defense at the Battle of Eddington and blunted the Viking invasion. Chastened but not yet broken, the Norse warlords have settled across Britain. For the first time in nearly 80 years, land is in a fragile state of peace. Throughout this sceptered isle, uh, the kings of England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, uh, sense a time of change approaching, a time of opportunity, there will be treaties, there will be war. So that's all they tell us. Um, giving some allusions to the different kingdoms that we'll be seeing here. Uh, there is also a little bit of a hint up here. Anglo-Saxons, Gaelic clans, Viking settlers clashed for control. So giving us, again, a sense of what's going on, but not much in the way of history. So let's go over and dive into some of the history. So first is going to be, well, you have um, the invasions of the Vikings um, that had been coming in uh, kind of towards the end of well, when the Romans withdraw and the British Isles are left on their own. Uh, this territory is going to be open to invasions um, so the coastline is going to be raided, and then over time the raids just get bigger and bigger as they smell blood in the water. And the invasions here start to tear up the different kingdoms, Mercia, Wessex, uh, Northumbria here. Uh, so this map does a good job of kind of showing the movements of the different uh, troops, um, and most importantly the Great Heathen Army, which is in 865 when you get a consolidation of a lot of the uh, invaders into kind of like a massive army that's able to move around and squash and steamroll big areas of resistance. As you can see here, a couple times it's going to divide, so when it doesn't have a big target, it'll split up uh, to just raid the countryside and then form up again when it deals with a big threat. So this is pretty important 
So the great heathen army here making lots of moves, obviously coming in and out of York, uh, attacking the area, moving into East Anglia, Mercia. Mercia is actually going to fall in 874, and kind of Wessex is going to be one of the last kingdoms left standing, led by Alfred the Great. So if you look in the trailer here, they're first going to show Ragnar Lothbrok. So he is actually going to be the main protagonist in the Vikings show, so he is sort of going to predate um, this time period. And a little bit after that is going to be The Last Kingdom. I'm sure you guys have seen this TV show. If you haven't, I would recommend it. It's pretty good. Um, but yeah, The Last Kingdom here alluding to Wessex. Um, so that is kind of where these two are, are set. Um, and it is kind of some legends say that Ragnar's sons are the ones who formed the great heathen army. So back to the history here. These guys are going around rampaging, doing lots of damage. Uh, but then Wessex is able to hold strong. Alpha the Great in 878 here at the Battle of Eddington. Not shown on the map, but located around... Uh, this here, I believe it's in Chippenham around this area. Uh, he's going to beat them at this Battle of Eddington. And actually what's going to be ha happening after that is a treaty is drawn up, the Treaty of Wedmore. Uh, and that is essentially going to... Um, well, we can pivot over to a map that I guess will help describe it. But essentially what it does, it will kind of demarcate as much as you can demarcate the different territories. So Wessex kind of is left on its own devices here. The invaders are kind of conceded to have the northeastern area of the British Isles here. Um, but I do say, I put a lot of caveats around this because it's not a clear line of territory. There's going to be lots of raids, porous borders back and forth, lots of uh, things happening. But what you can see here, and here's perhaps a better map, is that you can see um, the Danish and Norse territories. And we can go ahead and zoom out real quick. Um, this is going to be in 878. So just where the, the game is said to take place, 878. So probably, um, I assume, you know, if there's a little bit of like a, a tutorial, we, we, we'll be playing uh, the Battle of Eddington in the tutorial, and then after that we'll be let loose into the uh, the main game itself. And this is going to be probably the lay of the land. So um, in the blog, see, it does say that there's about 10 different factions. If you can count them here, there's probably going to be, you know, one here in Ireland, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then if you're going to go ahead and break up a couple more of these, Mercia, or sorry, Wessex and its dependencies, probably Mercia is going to get its own standalone. Probably the Danes are going to get a couple different ones. So that's 2 to 3, 2 to 3. That gives you maybe 5 or 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There you go. You have about your 10 factions through there. Um, so yeah, back to the history. The Great Heathen Army there. Going to be pushed back. Territories are going to consolidate. And then you have, this is where we start. Essentially what's going to happen a little bit later on is in 879, more Viking uh, armies are going to form and consolidate. But they're actually going to focus their attention on the Frankish kingdoms, which are a bit um, in disarray here. Political instability uh, is what the Vikings love. And so they're going to come in here. So you can see lots of invasions into the different territories. Paris is going to be besieged in 885. Um, so lots going on, and then around the 890s, the Vikings are going to turn their attention, or at least this contingent of Vikings, turn their attention back into uh, the east, southeastern portion of the British Isle. So lots of invasions back and forth, more threats continuing. Meanwhile, you know, you kind of have the porous borders here with uh, the Danes continuing to kind of pour through. So it's a tentative peace at best. Uh, and so what uh, King Alfred the Great is going to do is in the face of this, he's going to do a couple reforms. Um, so one is going to do a standing army as opposed to before where you had these levies that were supposed to be rapid response. Didn't quite cut it when it came to the, the scope and breadth of these invasions. So he's going to reform the army. And then another thing that he's going to do is form the system of burrs. And here you can see in the 10th century, uh, the burgle Heidage uh, fortification. Essentially what that is, is you take a bunch of your cities and you just fortify them. Make sure that they can withstand um, initial assaults. A lot of them built off of old Roman cities. And then they're going to be interconnected with military roads. And the whole idea is, well, the Vikings, they are smash and grab. What they want to do is come in, raid, take plunder, and get out before a substantial force can come in. And that is going to be very beneficial to them. It allows them to maximize their gains and minimize their losses. But what you end up doing is if you do fortifications, it makes it harder for them to assault you. If they decide to commit to an attack, well, it buys you time to bring in your main army. So with the fortification of Wessex, it makes it much, um, you know, it makes the borders or it makes the territory much less porous than it was otherwise. And there's also another cool map here um, that shows, if I can zoom out uh, a little bit, it sure shows the different territories, but it also shows some of the uh, the burrs, the different um, fortified cities, and it looks like actually some of the Danes are going to start fortifying their positions as well. So it's not just Wessex. You see uh, fortifications taking place kind of everywhere uh, in England. So it's kind of like mini castles coming up everywhere. 
that's pretty cool. Um, and then basically what CA does allude to is that the time period of the game is going to start in 878, but it's going to go all the way to 1066. So famously, that is going to be, you know, the date of the Battle of Stamford Bridge, um, you know, time of the Normans and all that. So that's quite a time period uh, to be covering. Very action-packed, going to be super interesting. So that's it for the history. Let's go back and see what CA has to say about the title itself. So you say, is this the next historical, historical Total War game? Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, next era-spanning historical Total War game is being worked on by the team and is yet to be announced. So basically they're saying that is going to be the tentpole. More details coming on that later. This one is going to be the standalone uh, one. So they confirm that, hey, think of it much in the same way that you'd think of Fall of the Samurai. Is it like a campaign pack? Will I need to own another game? They say, no, this is its own standalone. So again, think Fall of the Samurai. And they say, basically, um, takes place in 878, just after the invasion of the Great Heathen Army. So we went over that 10 playable factions. So we mentioned that and which ones they could potentially be. So again, here you can see a map, Wales, Wessex, perhaps some dependencies, perhaps um, several Dane kingdoms, Northumberland, uh, and then some areas to the north, some of the Celtic lands, and perhaps I would assume some territories uh, in the Frankish kingdoms, maybe they'll include part of the map, or I would hope so if they do expect to have, uh, you know, Normans involved and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's going to be pretty interesting. Back to the details here. So they say new mechanics and new highly detailed maps. Some elements will be brought back from Total War Attila since they fit the time period. So for me, elements from Attila that are going to make a comeback. Obviously, siege escalation because if you're going to focus on the burrs. Um, and you're gonna, you know, it's harder to take them. They're gonna have, wanna have some element of, you know, wearing them out over time. And that works well with siege escalation. If you don't maintain your cities, presumably there's gonna be a state of disrepair and it'll make invasions much easier. Big gaping holes can be formed in your city. So yeah, I would assume that's gonna be the case. Um, another thing that we'll be bringing back is gonna be the family tree. Obviously it's gonna be important when you have all these different kingdoms and their successors uh, vying for the throne. So family tree, I would assume is gonna be making a comeback. Political alliances as well, gonna be very crucial. So those are returning mechanics. New mechanics that they're um, saying here, not many hints, but I would assume some of them is gonna be tied to um, the way you treat your cities. Um, cities are gonna be kind of changed as we see here with the formation of the burr. So perhaps they'll be having something kind of like in medieval where you got to choose the development of a city being more mercantile or more uh, defensive, uh, two distinct paths. I hope they go down that route. Um, that would be kind of interesting, giving you more control on the development of your cities, giving us more variety over time. Um, so yeah, um, and then they say it's going to be built off Attila, uh, which is pretty cool, although they do say that they've kind of, um, um, yeah, they say that down here, so we'll get to that, um, in terms of what they cover, so they say here, um, what is the date range, it starts in 878, like we said, up to 1066, so, um, yep, mentioned that before. Battle of Stamford Bridge, Battle of Fulford, very interesting time period. Battle of Hastings around this time period as well. So that is freaking cool. So lots going on for this time period. Going to be action-packed, as I said. And this is going to be a very, very interesting late game. I mean, it's almost begging to be its own uh, a game in and of itself. So that's pretty cool. And I would assume over time, uh, end game mechanics are going to be paired up with sort of successive Viking invasions that will come on triggers. Uh, what geographic area will it cover here? The whole British Isles, no mention of... Um, the northern coast of France, but I do assume it will be included to some degree. What are the playable factions? So again, they're not saying too much. We do know it's 10, and from the map we've already kind of gone over what it is. What are the key features? Uh, super detailed map with more regional distinction. Again, the regional distinction I think will be to the development of your cities and which way you want to take them. You can enjoy new unique faction and cultural mechanics with deep narratives and character development. So I really hope that they've learned their lesson from Warhammer 2 and start to uh, implement some, you know, the very much unique mechanics, the way the Hyos play differently from the Skaven. I really hope they take that level or close to that level of... Uh, divergence in gameplay and use this in the historical titles. Same thing goes with the narrative driven character development and things of that nature. That would be freaking awesome. Um, lots of tweaks to various campaign mechanics and systems, blah blah blah, continuing on. What engine is it built off of? It's going to be built off Total War Attila, although notoriously that was pretty poorly optimized, though they say here they've been able to make it run smoothly. That's going to be really great, but another thing I hope they do is I hope they take these lessons learned and backpatch Attila so that Attila can also run just as smoothly. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, when, when will it be released? 2018. Uh, although they're going to announce more details in the future. And then more details here. Not much. They're not saying anything on cost just yet. Probably going to be gauging um, consumer feedback. 
And yeah, that's it for the information. So I hope you guys enjoyed this overview video. I'm sure we'll be hearing more from CA. This title has me pretty excited, but uh, I'm getting a little bit um, weary of kind of this time period. Uh, Age of Charlemagne, we already kind of covered this time period. Attila, you know, focusing a lot on um, Western Europe, uh, you know, medieval, early medieval era, etc. Um, I really hope that this tenpole title that comes in the future really sets us apart for this time period. But yeah, for the time being, it still has my interest and judging by, you know, the popularity of these two TV shows, the community is going to enjoy it for sure. So definitely stay tuned for more. I'll be bringing you some documentaries on this time period to uh, bring history to life. And also, you can go ahead and check out a um, documentary that I've got going on. going to be covering the crisis of the 3rd century. It's going to be on Odinathus, Savior of the East. That's going to be coming out in the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that. That's it for this video. hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. See you in the next one. Peace out.